Hello. Today I was going to be finishing painting my... Oh, what are they called? Dreadblade Harrows. Um, for my Night Heart Army. And I'd just started them before uh, with the horses, but got sick so I couldn't continue painting them, and it was before I decided to start recording. So right now I'm just going to start off with finishing the details on the horses, um, and I'm going to go for leather brown for the bridles, and then I'll follow up with some gold uh, for the highlights and other bits of the bridles that look a bit more stylized. Um, mostly using army painter paints, uh, just because I prefer the dropper bottles and they're a bit cheaper than uh, Citadel, and I just like the colors and how the paint comes out. So for the horses, uh, or the Dreadblade Harrows in general, I uh, wanted the horses to look like they were kind of drawn from the depths of hell. Uh, because if anyone who doesn't know anything about the Nighthaunt army from Age of Sigmar, uh, they are vengeful spirits who go out onto the battlefield to drag souls back um, to the realm of death uh, on behalf of Nagash. And so I wanted to, instead of doing something more conventional like you see on the box art, I wanted to make it seem like um, horses were very smoky uh, with fires lit inside so I did some <clears throat> did some work um, painting red and then slowly highlighting that and I'm going to do that on the mains as well um, kind of blending into a fiery effect and then I did white to a gray gradient to make it look like the horses were just made of smoke um, riding out uh, to go after whatever prey they have.
for the main, whenever I do kind of a layering color, and I'm still not very good at layering, um, predominantly just good at blending right now, but I am working on it, um, I usually will get the colors that I want to use out in a line. I'll do three at a time. Um, so for this, I did Moon Dust, Dragon Red, and Mythical Orange, um, and I just put them all in my wet palette, and for the initial base coat, I put um, just watered down some Dragon Red uh, for the main, and then slowly added the Dragon Red to the Mythical Orange to do highlights, and then added the mixture that I had resulting from that to the Moon Dust. Uh, for the final highlights that I did on the main. I'm just getting some mythical orange to put across their faces because it gives a very yellowy, orangey look to them. Um, very much like Skeletor, which I do like the effect. So uh, my other night haunt army, uh, other night haunt units, I have used this uh, on their faces uh, just to give them that good skull-like, glowy appearance. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be taking Kraken skin to go across their arms, um, because while I did prime these all in eucalyptus, I do like Kraken skin uh, for that teal color because it does have just a very ethereal effect on its own.
And now that those details are kind of done, I'm going to start the details around the cloak before I start doing the cloak itself, because those little details are easy to kind of get done first, so I don't have to worry about redoing the cloak if I go outside the line, so to speak. Um, just so the edge around um, the cloak near the face, I'm just going to do with uniform gray. Um, just very simple because we're going to be doing mummy robes for the cloak itself. It's like an off-white, um, slightly gray-white color that I really like to use um, for the fabrics and sometimes for the uh, random skull pieces on their bases. just to touch on the spaces above them because um, in a lot of these pieces I'm wanting to highlight the fact that they are glowing from underneath their robes rather than light hitting them. Um, so in a lot of the cases the highlights I'm doing are near the edges of their cloaks um, or the edges of their just ethereal bodies um, as well as of course as you can see on the horse um, where their bones show through. I prefer to do light to dark 
um, in a more opposite way for Night Haunt, just because I want them to look like they're glowing. Moving on from the cloak, uh, I'm going to be taking fog gray, uh, toxic mist, and oozing purple to kind of do a gradient on their bodies themselves. I'm going to start with a mix of fog gray and toxic mist, just a little bit of toxic mist in there to kind of do the start of <clears throat> their ethereal body coming out from under the cloak. And then I'll move into adding more and more toxic mist uh, to that ratio uh, to get that good blend of color and then just using oozing purple by itself with just a little bit of toxic mist um, for the edges of their wisps um, just to give them that weird kind of effect
for the next piece, I'm going to take some Vampire Red and just use it to color their, their helms in so that their um, the helmets they're wearing pop out from the rest of their body. Moving on to the weapon, I'm going to be using a Necromancer Cloak, which is a darker gray. Um, it's what I used on the horse's bodies, and I'm going to be using that to not only do the handle and the uh, guard on, but I'm also going to do a base coat of it on the blade itself, just to darken it up so that when I go back over it with some weapon bronze, um, it all comes together a lot better. And then just to finish the swords off, we're just going to do a bit of dry brushing with matte white, um, just to highlight the edges uh, on the top and side of the blade. and the riders finished up. 
I'm going to be moving to um, the bases. So Nighthawk armies, their bases usually have a lot of detail in them, in that of themselves already. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of my bases, based minis that I've been working on, I'm planning on going back and doing some additional work with the terrain because they're all just flat bases. Uh, with the Nighthawk army, a lot of them are do have pre-molded bases with a lot of detail. So first, I'm going to take Fur Brown, Barbarian Flesh, and Basilisk Brown in kind of a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one mixture just to make a good earthy tone. Um, I like using this for just simple <clears throat> terrain color. And I'm going to go through and fill in the cracks and little bits of rock that are poking out on these bases. Covered. I'm going to go back in with dark stone and pretty much do that all over <clears throat> every piece of stone work that's on these bases just to darken it up and give a good um, contrast to the earth beneath it. Now that all the stonework is done, I'm going to take Skeleton Bone and Necrotic Flesh because it makes a very good pale color um, and use that for all the column pieces and uh, artisanal stonework that's kind of crumbling in ruins under this.
in the space as well. There's little bits of skeleton, uh, mostly skulls. Uh, so I'm just going to take pure skeleton bone because I really like the look of that and I go over it with a wash later to kind of not only darken it but give it a much more weathered look. Um, I'm going to take that and just paint over the bits of skeleton trapped in the rubble. Now that all the columns and the bones are painted, I'm going to just take some plates, plate mail metal, and go over the helmet that one of the skeletons is wearing. Uh, after that, I'm going to take some basilisk brown and layer on some rust spots, and I recently picked up some dry rust uh, effect from my local store, and I'm just going to dab that on in little spots here and there where I would think the water best collects. Um, based on <laughs> painting videos I've seen. Now in these bases there's a lot of vines and roots and flowers coming up, so I'm going to start with doing just straight green skin um, because it's a very nice poppy green um, and going over all these vines. Um, and with the eucalyptus base coat that I did before, um, kind of going lighter on the tops of these does just give a good highlight.
Okay, and for the roses, we're, I'm gonna do gra dragon red is my favorite red to use for something very deep, vibrant, beautiful. Um, like I said, I'm still not good at layering, so I did not go back over this base a lot. I was very happy with how it turned out, um, but I think in the future in other bases, I'm gonna try and go back over uh, with layering to give better looking highlights. Getting close to the end, I'm going to take some weapon bronze and just do little dots on uh, their cloak hems where they have the little rivets um, just to make them, just to give it a little extra bit of detail. As I mentioned before, I am going to go over a lot of the stuff on the base with a wash. Um, usually I like to use a strong tone, but I picked up mint brown recently um, from my local store and used that. I really like how it looks. Um, it gives a lot of good shadows and just makes it look very worn, um, as though these runes have, of course, been here a very, very long time. finish up the figures. I like going over the Night Haunt um, arms and other textures with blue tone just to give a very light look of kind of etherealness. And this time I'm going to go over their wisps uh, with just a bit of purple tone just to give that little bit of tint to it. doing this with a minis a couple little um, couple minis before but I like to go along the base with just matte black um, and I think it re really looks nice as kind of a finisher.
last little thing. I'm going to take some glistening blood effect and go along the tops and a little bit on the sides of the blades. And from there, this is the finished result from the back and the front, a couple angles for you. And that's that done. This took me about three to five hours, I think. Um, so I did do my best to edit it all down. Hopefully it's not too long or hope it was at least relaxing to listen to and watch. Um, so I'll see you in the next video.